Hello and welcome back to my channel and continuing my look back at the 10 years of the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen toy line. Today I'm going to be taking a look at some of the most iconic figures to come out of the Revenge of the Fallen toy line and that is of course the Constructicons. With the Studio Series Devastator nearing its completion, I thought that it would be fantastic to look back at our fellow Constructicons that have kept us company for the last 10 years. As you can see here, I do in fact have all of the Constructicons that were actually released as part of the 2000 nine ROTF toy line that being Mixmaster, Rampage, Longhaul and Demolisher. Now you are wondering how comes you have two versions of Demolisher. That's because this version is Scavenger and this version is Demolisher. This is the version that we see at the beginning of Revenge of the Fallen and this is the version that we see that actually combines with Devastator. Now there are various other repaints of each of these figures out there and I won't be showcasing those in this review as some of them are not accurate to the movie and I haven't managed to pick up the Takara version of Rampage page so I won't be showing the red version of this deluxe class figure in this review. Nevertheless we have a lot of constructor cons to look over so let's start off with what I like to call the leader of the pack Mixmaster. As you can see the reasoning behind why I think he's the leader of the pack is because he's just the most cool looking most badass looking construction truck and he is honestly probably the best out of this entire assortment. As you can see, he's got what I believe to be one of the best vehicle modes that we've ever got for a Voyager class figure, especially in the Revenge of the Fallen movie toy line. And I honestly think that he could actually be one of my favorite figures to actually come out of the ROTF movie. As you can see on the back, we've got some fantastic detailings, such as where the cement would pour and drizzle down this section into the basin. That is a fantastic amount of detail that Hasbro didn't have to include. We've got a stairwell that would obviously lead up to where they would insert the cement into the mixer and we've got some fantastic Decepticon insignias on either side of the cylindrical chamber. We've got some magnificent sculpted in detailing here of where this whole section actually would clip onto and I love these hazard-esque type of paint apps on the side. All of the rims of the vehicle mode's wheels are in fact dubbed in a silver paint app and the wheels have actually been given a dusty type of look to their plastic in order to make it look as if though he has been rolling around on the construction site. We've got a fantastic sculpted in grill section with lots of mechanical detailings. We unfortunately don't have the very aggressive looking dog emblem, however that is something that will be seen on the Studio Series version. We have a Decepticon insignia on the top of the hood with the wind mirrors on the sides. A fantastic purple transparent clear plastic for the front visor screen as well as these really nicely detailed smokestacks and then rotating it around to the back as you can see we've got more detailing such as the where the stairs would be to get into the cab section and overall it's a really really solid looking vehicle mode if you flip it under to the underside you honestly wouldn't imagine this could transform and it also rolls incredibly well as well this is one of my favourite figures to come out of the Revenge of the Fallen toy line. However, we still have two modes to get this figure into. So let's transform him from his cement truck mode into his robot mode. To start off with, what you want to do is just take these sections here and pull those apart. We can then come to this back section now. Take this here, collapse that down. Take this here, take this section and snap that into place. Take this and rotate that around. And you just want to leave that like so. We can then proceed to fold out the arms just like this. This whole section here, you're going to want to pop open this whole piece, which will allow you to take this whole cab section and just bring it down, swivel it around just like so, and we can prepare that for later transformation. We can then take this whole section here and proceed to flip it out. And we can also come to these sections and actually disengage those just like so. These pieces here, you're going to want to rotate around, rotate the smokestack around just like that, and then repeat the same process now for this side to take these and flip the smokestacks up. These are really open to your own interpretation. We can then pull the head up ever so slightly and then take the gun and then bring this all the way around to the back and just leave it hanging there for now. Then what we can do is collapse all of these hinges in upon themselves and then this big tab here will go through this slot which will solidify everything. So just take this, bring these legs down as this whole section here is actually going to shift and this tab will plug into this slot. So just snap that into place and then bring this together and snap all that into place as well. We can then take the legs, rotate them around on these ratchet joints just like so, straightening those out and repeat the same process now for this side. Come to these pieces and just flip them out and then snap the toes into place, rotate that back just like so. 
and repeat the same process now for this side flip that out collapse these toes down and flip that back out as well we can then fold out these knee pads however they're more than likely going to recess inwards later on this whole section here what you can do is take this tab here and this is effectively supposed to slot into this section here however honestly it never really holds in too well and more or less just rests in there just like so turning now to the final few steps we can then snap this and pull this down just like so and then just take these pieces and lift those up take the fingers and spray those outwards and then repeat the same process now for this side you, what you'll want to do here is take this and rotate that outwards which will then allow you to take this and rotate this around just like so and then you can really collapse this in however you so choose i tend to just keep it like this just so that we've got the cement truck section kind of all sitting in this massive accumulative form and then repeat the same process now for this side so take this bring that around then take this section and flip this all back collapse it in upon itself just like that on the back take that and overlap this and then just straighten mix master up ensuring that this is tabbed in as best as you possibly can get it and now more or less here we have the transformers revenge of the fallen voyager class mix master in his awesome looking robot mode this is honestly one of the best looking constructor cons to come out of the revenge of the fallen toy line and taking a look at some of the details as you can see i think that he's got just a phenomenal looking head sculpt it's very insectoid like as you would imagine as i stated these pieces are up to your own interpretation so if you so choose you can bring those down even more you probably disengage the waist but just bring those down snap that in and you can have them situated like this if you so choose but there's also some nice detailings going on in the torso area and we've got some nice detailings on the legs as well some piston molded sculpted detailing we can pick out the details of the toes i really like the whole look of the arms i think that it's very movie accurate and i actually think that this version does pull it off better than some of the images that we've seen for the studio series version he is a very very awesome looking robot mode and i think that he looks great and he's also got some fantastic articulation ball joint head with like double hinges for the necks loads of multiple different joints in the arms allowing you to get them in loads of different poses and the same applies for the legs so a really fantastic looking voyager class now as i stated he does in fact have a third mode and no it's not a devastator head mode it's actually his triple changer mode which is up to some debate there isn't necessarily a way that you have to do it you essentially just want to disengage the gun and then this tab here is supposed to tab into this section here. And then once that's tabbed in, it's really up to your own interpretation on how you want to display Mixmaster in this triple third mode. I've seen some that like to take the legs and bring those back. It's quite cluster full here as there's loads of different joints. But the legs are supposed to sit somewhat like this. And then the arms are supposed to rotate over and come down so as long as you're along the lines of this this is a rather mess and this isn't really me trying as, as i stated there isn't a definitive look for this but this is more or less of what we see mix master look when he converts into his third mode and of course we do in fact have a missile which when you push this button here does in fact fire to a great degree considering that this figure is 10 years old so a fantastic voyager and i'm just going to say it straight away this is my favorite out of all of the constructor cons that i'll be reviewing today the next constructor con that i'll be in fact taking a look at is the voyager class long haul now this was a figure that i recently pulled out in order to compare it next to the studio series long haul however strangely enough i actually prefer the look of this voyager long haul at least in his vehicle mode although it not being accurate to the movie i think that its construction mode looks absolutely fantastic and i love the level of detail that hasbro originally put into this figure as you can see you've got loads of mechanical detailing actually within these leg sections which to me looks like mechanical components of the construction vehicle itself we can pick out some detailings underneath these grill sections here which i think looks fantastic you've got a black grill here with loads of different ridges and nuts and bolts and different headlights we've got some stairs leading up to here as well which looks fantastic some silver painted headlights with a 1214 logo some deceptive 
Decon Insignias as well as some piston action which I'll demonstrate later. And we also have a really very tidy and compact looking truck bed. The wheels of this figure are incredibly large and he does also roll incredibly well as well. There is a hump for the Decepticons version of this character in the form of payload. However, I won't be reviewing him until next year when we do a look back on the hunt for the Decepticons toy line. The Mecha Live gimmick for this figure is in fact this section here where you can actually lift and raise up the truck bed which is a really nice form of engineering and is a great way to execute Hasbro's main gimmick of this toy line which was Mecha Live. Now in order to transform long haul effectively you're going to want to come to the back and just pull this whole section out just like so. Take this and just flop that forwards. We can then come here and pull these sections away. Take this whole section here and just launch it back just like so which will then allow us to flip this over and untab all of this just like so bringing all the legs down and fully extending extending them to their maximum capacity we can then fold out long horse toes and repeat the same process now for this side and then take these tires and plonk them down just like that and repeat the same process now for this side as well we can then take this and you're going to want to collapse it here as well as here and this tab here will plug into a slot within there so just align this up appropriately snap that into place and then repeat the same process now for this side this figure is 10 years old so some of the joints may not hold up as well as perhaps they would have when this figure was initially released and then we can ratchet these legs down take this whole section here and snap it into place. Now this is more than likely going to detach as that was an ongoing issue with this figure when it was originally released. We can take this section now and this massive slot here will plug into this tab on the back. So just line that and snap that into place just like so. We can then fold out these arm guards, flip out the hands and proceed to rotate those down on the ratchet joints and repeat the same process now for this side and just bring those down just like so. This whole section here just flops out to the back and what you're supposed to do is take these wheels, pull those backwards and then split them and really and truly angle them in whatever you, way you feel is movie accurate. And then there is a small slot on the back that this tab here is supposed to peg into. However, once again, it is more than likely going to detach and honestly doesn't hold in very well at all. It really is a very kibbly figure and even to this day, as you can see, it doesn't really like to align properly like we saw in some of the promotional images. So just take this, pull this back. It's very difficult to angle this in a way that you would think it would tab into. But I believe I've almost got it just like so. Bring all this down. And then take this section here and re-tab this back on. Just like that. And there we more or less have the Revenge of the Fallen Voyager class long haul in his rather interesting looking robot mode. Now this whole top assembly is definitely up to your own interpretation. You can compress it and collapse it down to a lot greater degree than initially shown. And I actually think that this looks like a really awesome looking Voyager. It wasn't until quite recently that I actually managed to pick one of these up due to how rare they became in the UK as I do believe that this was part of the later wave of Revenge of the Fallen and was since scrapped in the UK, making this figure incredibly hard to get. I do believe I've got this ratchet joint on the wrong way. So rotate that around, spin that around so that the red paint app is now facing forward. But it is a really nice looking figure. As you can see, it's got some fantastic detailing, specifically in the head. We could pick out some mandibles for the teeth, which look very insectoid in their design. And I think that this whole chest section also looks really incredibly detailed. And it's got some fantastic looking paint apps on it. Even in the arms, as you can see, we've once again got that mecha live gimmick where you can move the pistons in the arms which is something that we unfortunately don't get on transformers nowadays and the head also when you rotate the head the small gear in the chest will in fact rotate as well so really nice small gimmicks like that made this revenge of the fallen toyland some of the best figures that we've ever got for the movies he also had a second gimmick where if you push this button here it did deploy a transparent clear energon blade which had some nice cybertron in hieroglyphs as well this was something we'd never saw in the movie but once again it's nice Nice to give long haul some form of weaponry 
And as you can see, I think he's got some nice detailings in the legs as well. Some gunmetal paint apps there too. My only real criticism of this figure was that he was rather lanky, considering how squat and chunky Longhaul was in the movie. He definitely didn't convey the appearance that we saw in the film. But nevertheless, he is a still a nice enough figure. And I'm definitely glad to have him in the collection. Articulation is as follows. The head can swivel left to right. Ratchet joints at the arms as well as hint butterfly joints. He can rotate at the bicep, bend at the elbows, hinge at the wrist due to transformation. The legs can kick forwards and backwards on ratchet joints as well as hinge out to the sides. There is a joint for the knee and the feet can close and open due to transformation. So a very nice looking Voyager class long haul figure and just setting him off to the back. Now with Mixmaster, we will take a look at the third and final Voyager class figure from the assortment, Voyager class Scavenger. Now much like all of the other Voyager figures that we have in fact taken a look at, Scavenger has just as a good amount of detail as the other two figures in the line. As you can see, he's got some amazing detailing such as the Decepticon insignia, loads of different paint apps as well as a stairwell that leads up to this cockpit section. We've also got some fantastic surface detailing on there as well. And there is also some nice detailings in the treads themselves, which are in fact of a rubbery type of plastic. So that is great for authenticity. However, they don't in fact roll and this figure doesn't have any caster wheels whatsoever. So he literally is stationary, which is a slight shame. However, it is in fact the robot mode where he utilizes these, where he can in fact roll which if you've seen the movie is really the most important mode for him to roll into as you can see we've got some nice weathering effect on this crane section itself which also has got some great joints in it and as you can see once again the mecha live gimmick making a return here when you move this crane section this whole joint in here moves and the same goes for the other side so i really did thoroughly enjoy the mecha live gimmick and then this scoop here can also rotate and this here is on a ratchet joint so a super nice looking construction vehicle. My only real complaint with this was that it is too small. It is marginally too small compared to the other Voyagers. This honestly should have been a leader class. However, back in the ROTF days, Hasbro only put characters that they thought deserved leader class treatment, such as Optimus Prime, Megatron, Bumblebee, Jetfire, all of the big names. So characters such as Scavenger would never get a look in for the leader class assortment. That is until, of course, the studio series came along and rectified that. In order to transform him it is exactly the same as Demolisher who I'll be taking a quick look at in a second so to begin with effectively all you want to do here is take these sections here and pull these out and then take these and snap them into place and just compress them and then repeat the same process here for the other side snap that down and compress it take these sections here and pull these outwards just like so which will then allow you to take this whole section untab that and effectively split all of this and it does become quite a bit of a mess. These ROTF figures were very complicated. Take this and collapse that down. And then this whole section here should rotate upwards just like so. And then this piece here should rotate around. This piece here should come and also rotate around. And as you can see, this will expose a big peg that will plug into this tab here. Just snap that into place. Flip him around now and then you're going to want to bring the head forwards just like so. This section here you're going to want to bring upwards and then bring this in. And once again the same tab and port is on this top section. So snap that into place and then turning to the arms. You're going to want to hold on to the body and ratchet those forwards on very heavy ratchet joints. Bring these arms down now and then this section here you're going to want to take it and collapse it backwards just like so. What we can then do is take this and rotate this around just like that and then this whole section here will in fact collapse in upon itself and then you just want to fold this out just like that and that is how the arms should more or less look. Repeat the same process here for the other side. So take this and rotate this around and then bring this down, bring this section down. Take the arm and collapse it in and then the same goes for this side. Take this and collapse this in also. And there we more or less have the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Voyager class scavenger in his robot mode. Now we'll set scavenger off to the side now as we'll very quickly take a look at the Revenge of the Fallen Demolisher. It is very difficult to keep up to date with the different names. Demolisher is the white one and scavenger is the red version. As you can see this just has just as much detail as scavenger does in fact have. It's got the Decepticon insignia however this time the majority of the color is 
of course white i think that they've gone slightly overkill with the weathering on the treads it does almost look as if though the treads are completely muddy which of course probably wouldn't be accurate but i think that it's a nice look nevertheless and does definitely separate his appearance from scavenger he has all the same gimmicks such as the mecha live gimmick just like so and i like the purple transparent clear plastic for the cockpit section it's very reminiscent of mix masters front visor section we've got some nice detailings on top but nevertheless let's quickly get this figure transformed into his robot mode so we can begin to compare him to scavenger and so here we have both scavenger and demolisher in their robot modes and as you can see the molding is completely the same for these figures it is merely just the color scheme that is different scavenger is red and demolisher is white all of the paint apps are more or less exactly the same especially when you take a look at this section you've got the gold paint where the gold paint is on this section as well as the black and silver paint so they are honestly really and truly exactly the same if i had to choose between a preference i do actually like the colors of scavenger a lot more i think that they evoke a decepticon sense a lot better than this version this one looks slightly too toy like for me and i don't think translates too well into toy version and personally i do think the colors in the movie were a lot more muted than this very very garish very vibrant white color so setting him off to the side and taking a look at the actual constructicon version as you can see he's got a fantastic very menacing looking head sculpt and it's got some great details such as these mandibles all of these figures look like as if though they are insecticons which i think is a really nice design motif by Michael Bay and Hasbro. I was actually quite a fan of the Michael Bay movie designs. As you can see, we've got the piston detailing once again for the arms, and he does essentially roll around on these two massive wheels, which as I stated, do in fact rotate within this mode. So if you wanted to, you could kind of get him rolling around. It doesn't necessarily work too well as the joints are quite stiff, but I guess if you just wanted to do stop motion, then this could definitely rotate very, very freely. And it is on ever slight ratchet joints as well. So he can hold its pose when you actually do display him. So do not worry about the wheel rolling around and causing him to fall over. If you have the arms propped up in a specific way and the wheels brought forwards on this hinge, he will stand more or less. It's just a matter of balancing him using his arms. So he's got some nice detailings in the shoulder areas. And I think the head sculpt looks great. I like how the wheel do in fact compress into these circular designs compared to their really elongated tread modes so a really nice looking figure in terms of articulation the wheels can rotate 360 there is a hinge joint allowing to bring them forward or backwards just like so there is ratchet joints so allowing you to pull the arms forwards and backwards however you have to hold the head otherwise the head will in fact go along with that there is no side to side nor up and down motion for the head which is a shame but these arms are on joints to allow them to rotate forwards and backwards as well as be compressed forwards and there is a ratchet joint here allowing you to spray them out to the sides as well as an elbow joint and then finally a hand joint so overall for articulation considering the design of this character i actually think that it achieves all of the articulation that you would want from a character of this unique design and then of course taking a look at the last constructor con that i'll be reviewing today here we have the original deluxe class rampage now i've got to say that i've definitely saved the worst for last in my opinion as this is actually my least favorite figure from the original constructor cons as part of the rotf toy line and that is for the simple fact that this figure is a mess but we'll get more into that when we get down to transformation as you can see he is a rather nice looking construction vehicle mode he is a very garishly type of yellow color with little to no paint to really break up the yellow blur he in fact does have rubber treads but much like demolisher or scavenger he isn't actually able to roll these and he does depend on these four caster wheels which do roll fairly nicely however this whole section here more than likely does tend to bump into that and this is one of my problems here this section doesn't really tab into place all too well whatsoever making this whole mode here incredibly difficult to actually get to stay together nevertheless it's got some nice detailing such as gears and pistons and mechanical detailing and these sections here as you can see there are these mecha live gimmick but this just keeps on pushing down which is a shame we've got some nice detailing here at the top and i do actually quite like the red translucent plastic that they've used for the cockpit of this figure but once again a very bland and boring figure and not one that wants to hold together too well at all all. So without further ado, let's just get this pain over and transform him into his robot mode. Now to begin with, you're going to want to take all this section here and just pry this open. Take this whole section and just pull this outwards if it hasn't come undone already. Flip these pieces up, take these legs and pull those out. This here you're going to want to untab and just bring that down 
and then untab this. This whole section is more than likely going to pop off. So really and truly, if it does fall off, I would recommend just setting it up to the side. But as you see, it literally just pops off. Bring this down now to the back. And then with these sections here, we can just pull these out just like so. And then take this here and rotate this around and bring this forwards. And then with this, the head section will come down and will actually fit into this groove here. So just tap that into place. And then this section here where this big slot is in the center should plug into this big gray tab. So just effectively line that up and try your best to snap that into place, aligning that up just like so. And then with these hands now, what you'll want to do is take this section here and just unpeg that which will then unfurl all of this here and just bring that down. This section here will rotate down as well. And then what we can do is rotate this here. What you'll then want to do here is effectively take the tread now and push it within the hand just like so. So that it looks like the tread is in fact coming out of the hand. We can then take this section and just flare this up just like so. It's really up to your own personal interpretation. This arm here is exactly the same. So just untab this piece just like so and bring this all the way around. Take this section here, lift that up and fold this section out as well so that we create this look as if though it is wrapping around this cog section. Take this hand now and then flip this forwards and then bring this hand down and then effectively just take this and insert it into the hand just like so. This section once again will just keep coming untabbed. This figure really is a mess and is the worst out of the constructor cards from the original 2009 movie and then just take this section here and essentially just reattach this on to its designated area. I do believe that's on the wrong way, so flip it around and snap it into place. And then what you're supposed to do here is take these, and they're on a variety of different hinge joints. You're just effectively supposed to collapse this and tab those two together just like so. And then this will more or less literally just sit up into this piece. So once that these are squared out, this will all fold in just like so. And it's effectively just supposed to rest there just like that. It looks rather ugly and there really isn't much going on for this whatsoever. It doesn't seem to lock in anywhere or do anything. It just, just stick out on the back. And of course you could probably mess around with it, but I honestly don't care for this figure that much to try for effort. But in terms of a robot mode, I mean, looking at it straight on, it does definitely look really, really cool and interesting. However, I don't think it looks very accurate to the film. Seeing as the color scheme is off and seeing as there are definitely a lot of details missing from this figure. As you can see, he seems to follow suit with all of the other constructor cons with the insectoid type of head design. I do actually quite like the design of the arms and I like how the real rubbery treads do in fact sit in the hands it definitely does look as if though he would use them to whip bumblebee with so that is definitely a nice attention to detail this section once again just doesn't like tabbing in at all it really is quite cumbersome how annoying this section is and the articulation the arms can more or less just swivel forwards and backwards there really isn't no elbows joint much like the new studio series version there is just a small swivel at the head the best gimmick of this figure is the pogo stick spring mechanism, which is effectively you take it and he was supposed to bounce around like we saw in the movie, but even this doesn't really work all that well. He's just supposed to hop around just like so. It's a neat gimmick, but once again, doesn't really execute too well. I mean, I think that these sections here are supposed to perhaps tab into this. So maybe if I tab this in, perhaps it will work slightly better but it really doesn't seem to want to plug in at all, which is a shame. No, I'm not, I'm not even going to attempt to do that in case I break the figure. Now there is a third mode where you could effectively have all this sprayed out and it does kind of become the back claws. And then you're supposed to take these and peg these as well. And these are supposed to become their own individual legs. And you're supposed to create a kind of centaur like looking mode for him which this is more or less it. <laughs> You're not really going to get much more out of this figure. So once again, this is the worst out of these Constructicon figures, for me at least. Perhaps you'll have a different interpretation, or perhaps I'm just completely transforming this figure incorrectly. But once again, this really isn't a figure that I care too much about. 
So that was my throwback review on the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen original Constructicon team. I hope that you enjoyed this throwback review. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below. I do apologise if some of the segments appeared to be slightly rushed. As you can see, I do have a wide range of figures here and I had to get through them fairly quickly and provide an informative commentary. So that's why some of the figures didn't get as much detail as some of the others. However, I do believe I covered more or less all of the major points of these figures. Personally, 10 years on I think that the majority of them have held up incredibly well this thing is definitely the worst out of them all and honestly I just completely disregard this this is a completely dreadful figure vehicle mode it's completely horrible to handle as well as its robot mode and the third mode is just absolutely atrocious whereas the Voyager class figures really seem to be very strong despite scavenger and Demolisher being smaller than they appeared in the movie. I think that they're great figures. Mixmaster, once again, is by far the best figure out of this line, and Long Haul isn't too bad at all. So if you did enjoy this video, let me know down in the comment section below, as well as let me know what figures you'd like me to take a look at again in the future. As 2019 draws to a close, I want to get as many of these 10-year tribute videos out before the 10th anniversary of Revenge of the Fallen is over. I hope you enjoyed this review, and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.